Hello students, how are you? I hope all of you are fine and staying at home safely. This is Nasim Ahmed, teacher of Ideal Public School, Kathigura. In the last video, I have explained some of the important points of this chapter, force and laws of motion. This is the ninth chapter of class 9. In this video, I will be explaining Newton's first law of motion. So without any further ado, let's get started. Students, before starting the explanation of laws of motion, I want to tell you one more thing that force can be classified into two main categories. The two categories are contact force and non-contact force. So what is contact force? These are the forces which come into play due to actual contact between actual contact. This is important term here, actual contact between the source and the object example frictional force elastic force so it is what whenever the object and and the source from where the force is occurring both are in contact then it is called contact force okay then you have uh, for example you have frictional force elastic force so what is frictional force so you know about friction i think so let's understand it friction means frictional force comes from friction okay comes from friction so what is frictional force then it is a force extended when two surfaces are in contact with each other it always acts in a direction opposite to the direction of motion of the object so when the two surfaces are in contact with each other then if a kind of force is uh, extended the force is called frictional force so it is always in the direction opposite to the direction of motion of the object so see in the diagram here you see a box is there wooden box so this box is moving in this this direction so the motion of this box is in this direction as it is showing because you are pushing from the backward okay so this is the pushing force this is the motion of the box and what will be the friction here this is the surface okay this is the surface and this is what the box itself so the force that is acting just opposite to the motion or the pushing force this this force is called what friction this force is called friction and this fr this force itself is called frictional force okay friction or we can say friction the phenomenon is friction actually and the force is called frictional force students so what is elastic force elastic force is the force that you can find in rubber band or any elastic substance okay so here you see the source of force where the force is coming out and the object both are in contact so what what is non contact force forces which come into existence without any physical contact without any physical contact here actual contact so you can understand it more easily between the bodies okay so next you have examples gravitational force magnetic force so what is gravitational force this is the force of gravity of earth or any other planet okay then you have magnetic force the force between the magnets or the force between the mag um, force of magnet with the iron or any other substance which it can attract or repel so this thing then you have unit of force so what is the unit that you have to use in case of force you have in SI system unit of force is Newton so students now we'll talk about laws of motion laws of motion Galileo Galilei so Galileo first of all said that object move with a constant speed when no forces act on them so what does this statement mean this means if an object is moving on a frictionless path and no other force is acting upon it the object would be moving forever so you just look at the statement firstly we'll understand this part whenever uh, if an object like if an object moves in uh, in a frictionless path so earlier on that example we have seen the box was moving the box was moving and see here the box was moving and due to 
the contact between the box and the and the floor or where it is situated some kind of friction is some kind of force is formed that force is called friction frictional force means frictional force fric force of friction we can say so if this kind of friction is not there on a surface and an object is moving on it that means and no other force is acting upon it then the object would be moving forever it will not stop it will it will be moving forever so here we can say there is no unbalanced force working on the object okay force of friction force of air and many other forces are always acting upon the object so whenever an object moves every time the force of friction will be there because it is it will be moving on a, on a surface then you have force of air air is also there and many other forces which will be acting upon the object so th this kind of activity is not practically possible so so students now let's understand galileo's observation how he has developed this kind of idea means from where he has developed such kind of ideas so he observed the motion of object on a inclined plane inclined plane when a marble is rolled down in an inclined plane its velocity increases of galileo's arguments firstly when a marble is rolled down from left from left side marble is rolled down you see the direction in the diagram it will go up on the opposite side up to the same height at which it is dropped down so this is the height exact height from where the marble is rolled down and it is moving from here from the left side and it is in the right side it will go up up to the height from where it is being dropped out okay the next one if the inclined plane is equal so if you consider both the inclined planes are equal okay equal the marble would travel equal distance while climbing up and travel while rolling down so suppose uh, this uh, these two are equal okay this a and this b are equal and if the if the height is this much and from here if it is rolled then it will go down and the the distance it will cover and the same distance it will cover while going up okay this is the statement that um, is observation that he has done then you have if we decrease the angle of incl in inclination if we decrease it the angle of inclination of the right plane the marble would travel further until it reaches its original height okay so if you decrease if you decrease the uh, inclination then what will happen it will it will travel up to the distance from where it can reach up to its original height okay so <clears throat> next you see if the right side plane is made flat so in the next case you see the right side plane is made flat so what do you think where this marble will go marble would travel forever to achieve the same height until it reaches up to its uh, height it will be moving and moving it will not stop okay so these three arguments that uh, galileo made so what's galileo's in inference upon this so you see we need an unbalanced force to change the motion of a of the marble but no force is required when the marble is moving uniformly so when, uh, here the marble is uh, is moving uniformly that means it it no other force any external force not no uh, frictional force or any other external force is uh, applied on this marble just it is being dropped from a height so this surface is also frictionless so it will it is moving move and moving if no means the for, uh, there is no change in the motion because there is no external force is applied in other words we can say objects move at a constant speed constant speed if no force acts upon them okay so this this is the galileo's observation okay students let's understand now newton's laws of motion so we'll be understanding the first law in the first law of motion in this video you see stood newton studied the ideas of galileo and gave a, gave the three laws of motion these laws are known as newton's laws of motion so what is his first law let's uh, let's see what's it, what is the statement any object remains in the state of rest or in uniform motion along a straight line until it is compelled to change the shape by applying external force 
so here also you see the the application of the external forces there let's see the explanation if any object is in the state of rest then it will remain in rest until an external force is applied to change its state similarly an object will remain in motion until any external force is applied over it to change its state this means all objects resist to the changing their state the state of any object can be changed by applying external forces only so any means any any object which is at stationary or which is moving it will not change its position it will not change its uh, way of motion means, uh, the state of motion we can say until you apply some kind of external forces okay so let's understand this with uh, an example uh, see this diagram here you see see this picture newton's first law of motion you see an object at rest here you see the football this football is what this football is just just at stationary position okay it is at rest you can say it is not moving anywhere so it will it will be it will be at rest until and unless you kick it okay here you see the the boy or someone is kicking it so if you kick it then it will change its position the stationary position okay next you see an object in motion will continue with constant speed constant speed and direction unless acted on uh, by an unbalanced force you see this ball is moving and if you stop it in the net it uh, means a kind of un, uh, external force is applied to stop it okay when when you are applying uh, your feet to stop the football you are also applying some kind of force some kind of external force to retard the motion of the football so just to write down the uh, definition of newton first law of motion or uh, most importantly it is also called as law of inertia so what is inertia you will understand it uh, i'll be explaining it now so this is what this is the newton's first law of motion let's go through it again any object remains in the state of rest or in uniform motion along a straight line until it is compelled to change the state by applying external force so i think you have understood it if you have not understood anything regarding all these that thing which i am explaining here so you just you can comment in the comment box or you can uh, just ask me directly in my whatsapp students now we'll be understanding how this newton's first law of motion uh, is affecting our everyday life okay see first example a person standing in a bus a person standing in a bus falls backward when bus starts moving suddenly okay so you have seen in the trains or in the buses that a person if it, if he is standing on the bus then if the bus moves like uh, if this is a bus if this is a bus and if it is moving uh, by this way the motion of the bus is this way earlier it is what it is just stationary and if it starts suddenly it starts moving then the person who is at rest and the bus is also at rest and uh, if uh, the motion occurs because of the bus movement of the bus then what will happen the person will feel some kind of force in the backward in the opposite direction of the motion of the bus okay so let's see this happens because why this happens the person and the bus both are in rest okay while bus is not moving but as the bus starts moving the leg of the person starts moving along with bus but rest portion of his body has the tendency to remain at rest that's why what the person falls backward okay <clears throat> so next example you can see a person standing in a moving standing in a moving bus falls forward if driver applies brake suddenly okay so see the explanation this happens because when bus is moving the person standing in it is also in motion along with the bus obviously but when driver applies brakes in the uh, the speed of the bus decreases the speed of the bus decreases suddenly or bus comes in the state of rest suddenly okay in this condition the legs of the person which are in contact with the bus comes in rest 
while the rest part of the body have the tendency to remain in motion because of this the person falls forward if he is not alive suppose you are going with your fathers or somewhere in a bus or in in your personal car or any any any, any vehicle so this kind of motion this kind of activity uh, means this kind of force you can uh, feel in your car okay in your vehicle so this is what second example that we have understood so next you see before hanging the wet clothes over laundry lines before hanging the wet clothes over laundry line usually many jumps are given to the clothes to get them dried quickly so droplets of water from the pores of the clothes fall on the ground and reduce amount of water in clothes in clothes dries them quickly so this is the activity that she performs so we can see like uh, whenever this jerking thing happens then uh, you see some droplets water droplets is coming out from the clothes so why this happens this happens because when suddenly clothes are made in motion by giving jerks the water droplet in it have the tendency to remain it rest in rest okay and they are separated from the cloth and fall on the ground so this is very simple thing so very simple phenomenon you just need to understand it i i hope uh, my explanation are useful for you like uh, you are understanding something if you are not understanding you can comment in the comment box so or you can directly ask me you can call me or you can whatsapp me simply i will explain mass and inertia so we know about mass that what is mass and what is inertia inertia i think this is a, a new new topic for you we know about mass we cannot say directly like uh, mass is equal to weight but somehow we can say like this so <clears throat> let's understand it the property of an object because of which it resists to get disturbed its state is called inertia simply uh, the the statement that we have just gone through uh, that this is the this is the property that an object have okay of any object you can say of any object the property of any object because of which what he do he just resist to get disturbed he just he don't want to change means he don't want to change the change, change its uh, state of uh, state of motion okay if it is stationary it it will try to be uh, remain stationary okay so this is the property of an object because of which it resist to get get disturbed its state it is called what inertia okay inertia of an object is measured by its mass okay the more mass that means uh, maybe we will see uh, in the next uh, what is the relation between them mass and inertia inertia is directly proportional to the mass inertia is directly proportional so what does that mean directly proportional means if the mass is more inertia will be more if the mass is less inertia will be less this means inertia increases with increasing mass yes and decreases with decreasing mass okay a heavy, heavy object will have more inertia than the lighter one in other words we can say the natural tendency of an object that resist the change in state of motion or rest of the object is called inertia simply we can say like this is the natural means uh, if if you are a good student you will not change by yourself obviously you will not change by yourself this is the tendency of yourself to be a good student like uh, you you do always you do the homework always like every day if the teacher give you anything like any homework you just do it and never you are never late to the school you are never going uh, you are never um, like um, absent minded in the class okay this kind of activities but if any student like if if you make any friend and who is not that much uh, like um, in the good zone of the students so what he do he will try to pull you towards his zone okay towards the bad zone so this is what uh, if the the more grip you have in the good activities then you will not you will resist him to go there okay uh, you will resist his activities or you will pull him towards you, yourself this is another case but of uh, the important thing is uh, you will resist the motion of that that uh, friend of yours isn't it the activities of your friends so this is what this is inertia actually okay so i'm just i've just given one example here since a heavy object has more inertia it does it is difficult to push or pull 
a heavy box over the ground than the lighter one simply okay so we'll understand it with an example okay students consider the image given below consider this image given here it is easier for a person to push the bucket so two buckets are hanging uh, it is easier to push the bucket that is empty rather than the one that is filled with sand this is because the mass of the empty bucket is less than that of the bucket filled with sand so this example is very like uh, easy example from where you can understand this thing uh, this inertia thing very easily so if it is empty like this is empty bucket this is having no sand and nothing so obviously this one will be having less mass than this uh, sand filled uh, bucket so if you want to push this these two like uh, if you want to firstly you, you will push this one then what will happen uh, you you can push it easily okay you can uh, change the position easily uh, then if you try to push this one then you will have you will require more amount of force okay more amount of force so this one you can easily understand this is what this one is having more mass that means it is having more inertia and this one is having less mass that's why it is having less inertia so i hope you have understood so students we have come at the end of this video so in this video we have learned about types of forces types of forces then we have learned about uh, unit of force then uh, galileo's observation on force okay so his statement we have learned then from this statement basing on this statement newton has given his laws of motion so we have learned in this video newton's first law of motion and uh, we have then we have understood about inertia and the relation between mass and inertia so i hope you have understood uh, these topics if you have any any uh, doubt regarding these you can uh, ask in the comment uh, or you can directly contact me so thank you for watching and and god bless